Hello everyone, Zero Fossil Fuel. Today is Wednesday, October 10, 2012, and this is a Zero News update from my corner of the garage. Um, first of all, happy birthday, Lefty. <laughs> Many more to you. Um, secondly, I want to thank everyone who has shown generosity in helping to donate for the project that I have started, the Zero Labs Workshop Renovation Project. Um, if you have not seen the project update page, I will post links to it below. Uh, and those of you who have not donated, I hope you can find it uh, in your hearts to maybe uh, toss a little little tip in the bucket. I'm not asking for a lot from anybody, but I'm hoping a lot of people will, will help with the project. Uh, I know my goals are lofty. I do have an end game, and I hope to execute that end game very soon. Um, like I said, things don't look so good at the workplace these days, and uh, I can only say that uh, every day that I go to work, it's gotten worse. So um, I, I hope you will consider donating. If you can't, uh, please comment below anyway. Follow along. Enjoy the show. I'm having a lot of fun. I hope you will too. Um, now for the update. Last week, I made a couple of changes to the back of the recumbent bicycle. I took took apart the Rube Goldberg mount, motor mount frame that I had uh, around and above the rear tire and I built a small mounting plate for the electric motor that is much closer to the drive gear on the on the uh, cassette sprocket and uh, the chain is almost one-third the size that it was before so that, that small amount of chain that you see in the picture should not have any slop to it at all. It's a very elegant looking uh, setup right now and it came out extremely well. Here's a slightly blurry view of the underside, how it's just tack welded to the rear swing arm frame. That's a pretty sturdy plate so it, uh, it'll hold the motor very, very well. Um, to power this thing, I had planned to use lead acid batteries and they are the standard 7.2 volt I'm sorry 12 volt 7.2 ampere hour batteries um, I had a bunch of them laying around and a lot of them weren't very good so instead of going out and buying some what I ended up doing was trying to use some of the spare parts that I have around the lab and I put together this schematic diagram of a sealed lead acid plate desulfator this, uh, this schematic diagram was published by Frontier Springs. It is online now at FrontierSprings.com. In the picture, you see uh, the printed circuit board, or the perf board prototype that I put together. This is my, my first prototype of the device. And in the back is my, my uh, marked up schematic diagram. Here's a close-up of the board. You can see the NE555 timer and all of the support components along with the little power MOSFET and a small heat sink. Here is the perf board mounted in the enclosure and those are all the uh, binding post terminals on the right hand side that are for the power input to the, uh, to the device as well as the trickle charger to the battery, the terminal outputs to the battery and then the green and yellow terminals are for monitoring the uh, the peak voltage that's being applied to the plates of the battery. For those of you who have ever tried to build this device and failed miserably, uh, I can tell you I know why that is true. If you look at the schematic diagram and specifically focus in right here on the power MOSFET, I looked at that for quite a long time and I, and I said to myself, how is a P-channel power MOSFET going to operate from a negative ground system as a source follower? And I thought about it and I thought about it I said, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and build it the way the schematic is shown and see if it works. The answer of course is, it can't work. A P-channel power MOSFET cannot operate as a source follower from a negative ground or positive supply. This is how the schematic 
should have been drawn. Notice that the source is connected to the positive and the drain is connected to the load which is sunk to the negative rail and then the gate is uh, inverted to show how it is properly fed from the, uh, the input network. Other changes that I made to the circuit are in these component values. You'll notice that C1 has been increased from 30 microfarads to 47. There is really no practical maximum to that. Uh, 47 to 100 microfarads is fine for that. R3 is simply a resistor that decouples any of the spike voltage being generated uh, as part of the circuit to the right of R3 from getting into the part of the circuit to the left of R3 which is the signal generator or the 555 timer. So all that does is it, it, su it supplies some isolation on the power supply rail to the 555 so that the 555 has a clean DC voltage to operate from. R1 and R2 were 1 meg were specified as 1 meg and 68k. I changed those to 470k and 33k, leaving C2 at 0 0.001, which increases my primary fundamental oscillating frequency from about 1.4, 1.3 kilohertz to about 2.8 kilohertz. Uh, I like the higher frequency because the inductors L1, L2, and the power MOSFET do not generate as much heat once uh, when, when, when the circuit's been running for quite some time. The other thing I show on the schematic diagram that was not drawn on the original is the terminal point that is, is the test point for the peak voltage sensing circuit. Um, that was omitted from the original schematic diagram and in fact putting the diode and filter capacitor D2 and C6 on the circuit board with the electronics really is not the best place to put it because you are still seeing voltage spikes in the in the higher frequency ranges that do not appear across the terminal simply by because of the interconnecting wire that it takes to uh, attach it to the battery so when I take my spike measurements I actually measure those spikes directly at the battery terminals so here's the completed schematic diagram without any, uh, any markups. I will put this schematic diagram and post it online at altenergy.org so that you can uh, build this yourself. Here is the uh, plate desulfator attached and connected to the battery and running. And this is a picture of the oscilloscope wave pattern that you get at the battery terminals. So you'll see my, uh, my sweep time is 50 microseconds per division, and if you do the math, you'll see that's about 2.8 kilohertz, and my, my uh, vertical deflection is 10 volts per microsecond. Now, zero volts on this uh, particular trace is the second line up from the bottom on the oscilloscope trace. So you'll see that the, uh, the, the, the line is sitting at about 13.5 volts DC, and you'll see a prominent spike that is about 27 volts positive but that is the trailing edge of the power MOSFET cycle and if you look at the leading edge of the power MOSFET cycle very very faintly you can see the next line up almost uh, I want to say 38 volts is the leading edge peak uh, of, of voltage that is appearing across the battery terminals when the device is in operation The verdict is still out whether or not the Frontier Springs plate desulfator circuit actually works. <laughs> uh, I really don't know. There have been uh, reports on both sides of the fence. Some people say yes, some people say no. I intend to find out. If it works, great. I'll recover a lot of batteries and uh, I'll have uh, you know a power source for my recumbent hybrid electric bicycle. Uh, if not, well, I'll go out and buy new batteries and call it call it a, a learning experience. Um, immediately after this I've uh, got some uh, building materials that I need to order for the workshop conversion project using some of the funds that I have already received as donations so again I appreciate the donations that I've received uh, they will not go to waste and I will be uh, getting started on that right away. I ha now have 240 volt power down to the uh, future workshop 
and a circuit breaker panel on the wall. So I've got power down there I can work at night by and uh, I'll be uh, pulling apart some of the uh, some of the original lumber that was in there and I'll use that as fuel for the rocket stove when I when I have that inside heating the uh, heating the workshop. That's all for now. Zero fossil fuel. Hope everybody's enjoying my series. Everyone take care. Peace.